and ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, cats and kittens, welcome back to the dark side of the podcast. And thank you, thank you, thank you. The podcast is your home for rational crypto news and objectivity, leaving emotion at the door, talking about what we like, why we like it, and where we see it going. We are not offering financial advice. It's right there. We are telling you what we do, and that is all, and that's very important to remember for this particular stream. We are not telling you what to do. We are only telling you what we do, and that is all. We don't slow down. We don't let up. Full speed is our only speed. I am your host, Scott, pragmatic investor who has won and lost fortunes. And joining me, as always, is the greatest producer of all time, Bell. How are we doing tonight, Bell? You know what? You were just proven wrong. You were thinking nobody would get the answer to the question you put out in chat. And Logan got it. There is no damn way you texted him. You had to. There no, is no way not. that this 22-year-old kid has ever heard of Wicked Lester. There Logan's is not no 22. damn way. How old is he? How old's Logan? Logan's my age. Okay, there's no way that this 40-year-old kid, 40, boom, out and doxed. We're we're having a good time tonight. Scott started drinking a little bit early. Uh, there's no way that this 40-year-old kid no, has heard of Wicked Lester. <laughs> <laughs> just no way. Really, I'm, but I'm pretty. You know what? Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> Logan, you want to tell Scott who Wicked Lester is? What? Yeah. What group? Type it in. The, from them. Type it in. I, the I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Yeah. I don't hear <laughs> anything here, Bill. Uh, <laughs> here at the podcast, we have a tendency to talk about what others are not talking about and bringing the focus onto use case cryptos because, as we know, these are what drive the market and bring innovation to a world that desperately needs it. The status quo. It's no longer acceptable, and it's time for a technological revolution. Welcome to crypto. Welcome to the podcast. And thank you, thank you, thank you. And if it seems like Scott is in a tremendously good mood tonight, I I am. It's I'm not on call. I have been, I've been on call for about a week and a half now, and it grind it just grinds you down. Now, you know everything is hanging around the the phones. I have to carry two of these damn things. That that's how happy I am with my life. And I'm not on call tonight, so I hit the sauce a little bit early. If you're wondering by the end of this show, why are my cheeks so rosy? Why am I talking so fast? And has he been drinking? The answer to uh, that question is yes. Yes, I have been drinking. Here's to you, boys. Cheers. Give me just a second, Bell. I told you it's a drinking stream for me. Mm -hmm. Boy, it makes me charming. That's that's what alcohol does for me. Makes me amazingly charming. And for Logan, who did, may or may not have known Wicked Lester, round of applause. Ten Jackal coming your way, man. And I, I understand that Jackal's sitting at right around 31 cents, so that doesn't seem like such a big deal. Uh, it's going to be all right, man. It is absolutely going to be okay. And it plays in wonderfully with today's monologue and effectively what this show is about. So I did a video just a little bit ago. There is a paradigm shift that is happening in crypto. It's happening right in front of your eyes, as a matter of fact. That's what's great about it is that you get to see this from uh, from the uh, uh, from conception to birth to to afterbirth. You get to see the entire effect. You get to see it play out right in front of you. Uh, I am of the opinion, and I'm I'm right here, by the way. You know what? That's what's great about having an opinion editorial show is that I'm right about virtually everything I say, and in this case, I'm absolutely right. Crypto needs an enema. Crypto absolutely needs an enema. And uh, crypto, as a matter of fact, got an enema. It was called FTX. This has cleared out so much of the driftwood. It has just absolutely given a, a big old shift over to crypto. And people are going to start picking up on this. Now, they haven't yet. They haven't yet. You know what? Uh, bitter clingers will hold on forever. That's not a political reference, by the way. That applies to anybody who is stuck in an incorrect mindset. Meaning, I have done it this way. I will always do it this way. I will never not do it this way because this is the way that I know. These are the people that hold on to it. Crypto is going to be going under a massive, massive paradigm shift. And what it's going to become is uh, what it was intended to be. And in this case, not just a not a, a, a source of wealth, not not nothing like that, not a purely speculative asset. You don't need crypto to do what crypto has been doing. Ponzi schemes, pyramid schemes have been doing this forever with cash. So you didn't need crypto. Crypto made it easier, but it didn't change the underlying fundamentals of it. 
meaning that you are involved in something that has no direct uh, monetary value to itself, only what other money can be brought into the system. That is the bulk of cryptos. That's 60, 70 percent of all cryptos. That's the bulk of the goddamn chains of the L1s over on Cosmos. This is where they're living. Their value is simply how much more money can they get brought into the level one, into their system to be able to keep this thing going. That's that's where they're going, and this is where the paradigm shift. I am seeing some. Uh, I see my stream is kind of flicking around up here, guys. If I'm losing frames, stay 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 with me. All right, we've had we've been uh, very very lucky on the internet connection lately. So uh, if it's dropping off, man, I do apologize. But we're gonna go ahead and soldier through this anyway. The paradigm shift that I'm talking about, and the fact that we are shaking off uh, the way crypto used to be to the way crypto is being done now, is that if you are involved in a crypto that does not have value capture, meaning an external value capture not directly associated with the token itself, if you are not in something like this, then you are going to bleed. I'm pretty sure you've already experienced it a little bit. If you have been in crypto in the last month, you have definitely experienced it. And I'm not talking about the big massive sell-offs. I'm not talking about the big dump and, oh, my God, we're down 30% overnight. What the hell happened? I'm not talking about that. That is a, uh, that, that's a result of the way that central exchanges were manipulating everything. That, that's all that was. That was just an aftershock. It's not what it is. It's just part of it. So... Now that we've slowed down, now that the central exchanges are starting to close down, close doors, and, and the big, massive billions of dollars that are getting tossed around back and forth, over leveraged, stupidly leveraged, just just out of uh, out out of hand, borrowing against vapor. Now that this is starting to shake out, we're starting to get down to the brass tacks here. We're starting to get down to what crypto actually is and what crypto can actually do. Now. These uh, purely spec, I don't know if this stream is going to hold on, Bell. I'll keep pushing out. I'm seeing big, big, big frame drops. So uh, now I've derailed myself. I'm sorry. I was just rolling too. Shit. This, I got to keep that screen minimized. You know, if we keep going, we keep going. If we don't, we don't. Uh, what this is going to be per, uh, shifting over to right now are, are use case tokens. And again, these are tokens that have an external income, that are having a source of revenue aside from themselves and aside from speculative in nature. This is what Web3 is. This is what it's being designed to do. And this is where you are going to see your value capture. This is the paradigm shift that I'm talking about. Now, I've been in front of this. I like to think I've been in front of this. I know because I've been getting a lot slower growth than a lot of other folks. But I am very, very heavy in use case tokens. And use case tokens have a tendency to have slower organic growth. It's just the nature of it. Uh, when you are required to produce a good product to get income in, then these products take a while to develop. They take a while to market. They take a while for people to get used to them and start to say, you're right, this is something that I absolutely need. This is the paradigm shift that I'm talking about here. So we're going to be discussing some of these tonight. And we're going to be chopping down some of the uh, chopping down some of the trees that, have a, that really have a tendency to get in our way. Uh, people are still trying. This is, the, this is the bitch of the whole thing is that people are still trying and uh, the new shift, well, I mean, the shift over the last year or so was going from pure meme tokens to L1s. Because for some reason, as soon as you stand up an L1, it's suddenly valid. Well, look at here, man. We, we have an L1. Look how important we are. We have an L1. We are an L1. We make our own fate. We have a decentralized autonomous organization. We have all these things. But you're making tokens that are purely governance tokens. That's all they are. That's all they are. That's all they do. Their value is purely governance. So as much as I appreciate something like that, I, I do. I like having a say in how this chain is, is ran, how it's going to be ran going forward. I'd love that. But if the only purpose of the token is governance, then you've effectively built a, a governing body before you even have people to govern. And this is not just putting the, the, the horse in front of the cart. This is not even on a road. I, I, I can't understand this, but I, I get it because it's very easy to market. It's very easy to get on Twitter. It's very easy to airdrop big tokens that have no value whatsoever that are going to just debase right down into zero. It's very, very easy to do that because uh, it, it's hype. 
and it's easy to stand up an L1. It's not that hard. We have armies of people that all they do is provide validation. That's all they do is stand up validators. They have no particular interest in these particular tokens. They don't matter. If you have a validator on every single chain, I want to say that you are not deeply involved in every single chain. Your job in crypto is to provide, is to stand up validators and you'll stand them up on any network. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because your value capture is the governance token itself. The governance value capture is people buying it. But then you actually have to get down to the point and say, what does it do? Because governance by itself is a 100% cop out. What does the token do? Well, it, governance, it lets you, lets you vote. Great. How about I just don't own it and don't vote and don't care? Why don't we try going that direction? And then what's that going to do to your chain? I'm no longer really interested in uh, in in these pure L ones because the uh, incentivized type of uh, uh, of chains now we're we're starting to see the backlash of that we're seeing the blowback of all these things heavy heavy high 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 APRs on L ones that effectively have no society on them you're an L one with no apps no DApps nobody's built on you now it's great that you're competing our rules are better. Our rules are better. You should definitely come to, to Cerberus as opposed to, to Wawa because, you know, we, we have better laws. We have better rules. You can build here. That's that's all great. But when you are as diluted in Cosmos with L1s as the Cosmos is, all you do is fight and claw for the little bit of revenue that might be available. Just saying that we have better rules is not going to incentivize people to come and invest with you. What's the point? You want to invest in L1s that have good apps built on them. These are the value capture. These are 100% the value capture. The, the governing chain by itself gets value from the apps that are built on it. So if there's nothing built on you, what would you say? What would you say you do here? Well, our token is use case. You can use it to vote. Great. Vote for what? Vote for what? The economies, the L1s that are being built out here should make it, uh, should just by their very definition, provide a good basis for dApps to build on. Not we're going to restrict them or we're permissionless or we're going to do whatever. Permissionless isn't going to play out here anymore. I mean, it's it, it's neat. It's, you know, it's fun. But with all of the L1s that are available, are you telling me if I was going to stand up something on Juno, but instead said, I want to build it on Wawa, do you think Wawa is going to care what that app is? They're not going to give a damn what that app is. All they're saying is, oh, thank God, somebody's building on us. And this has led to the infighting that that seems to just be exceptional and crazy prevalent in Cosmo, uh, more than most uh, most other large ecosystems. It is here. All people do is sit around and snipe at each other. They, that's that's what they do. 70% of the L1s on here didn't need to be L1s. They could have just been an app. They, they, they could have just been a dap built on another uh, kingdom in the cosmos. Any of them could have done it. But for some reason, it, it's just it's almost taboo just to say you're a dap, just to stand it up as a dap, just to say, well, yeah, but they didn't want to go through all the effort to stand up their own L1. These L1s don't exist to provide platforms. These L1s exist to provide revenue for the people who set them up. Sorry, hard truth. I don't care if you agree with me. Uh, it, it's uh, the way I see it. And I'd like to think that token prices and market caps are definitely favoring my point of view. So it, as far as going forward, this is going to be more important than, than I think right now than any other time up there. Because the, speculate, the, the, the shine is off from this. The shine is off from crypto. Now, it's not enough just to say we're building. Now you have to say, what are you building? It's not enough to just say the developers are developing. What are you developing? Where is the value capture? We are cleaning out. This cleaned out a lot of the pure casino uh, crypto people, crypto investors, the people who know absolutely nothing about blockchain, don't know the difference between L1, L2, DAP. Don't, they, it, it doesn't matter. It means nothing to them. All they want to know is how much, how soon, and where do I buy it? That's it. That's what they want to know. These people are getting cleared out. And it's going to be replaced with a smarter investor. A smarter investor is going to say, I'm, I'm happy to invest money with your uh, ecosystem or with your chain, with your debt. I'm happy to do that. Where is going to be, where is your value capture? How are you going to turn my money into more money? And it's going to have to be without, well, more people will buy it. 
That's great. I always love that. More people will buy it. Sure. Why will more people buy it? Who, what, when, where, why, and how? I think it's absolutely critical right now. So we're going to run through today. It, it's kind of going to be a money stream, but we're going to run through the who, what, when, where, why, and how. I want to give you my viewpoints on these things so you understand where my money is shifting. Because I think this is, it's, I, I try to make the best of any situation, any market conditions that exist. I will do everything I can to absolutely make the best of it. But I will make the best on it based on the investments, not in people buying underneath me or other people buying what I buy. If they do, great. But my, it's not my intent is to get my money in uh, early and let it go. Because these days are, man, guys, these days are going. All right. They they were great. It was fun. We all had a ball, but these are starting to fade. Now you're going to have to get smart. Now you're going to have to figure out where do I put my money? Why do I put my money in there? Who are these developers? How are they going to capture value? How is all of this going to occur? So I, again, trying to just trying to polish this turd as much as I can. I think I got it. I think I cracked it. I think I got a nut for it. And I'm more than happy to share that with you. Very long monologue, guys. I do apologize. I wanted to get all that out. It was all the stuff I couldn't say on the video because nobody wants to watch it. Just a solid 15 minute YouTube video of this. Nobody's going to stick around that long. And I wanted to make sure I get the information out. So before we get in here and start taking some of these things apart, as always, Bell, do we have any questions, comments, concerns? I don't even see you smiling. Was I so <laughs> captivating? Nobody even had any uh, questions about what I'm about now? We, we've we got we've got a massive three total comments and questions. So Wow, you guys suck, man. Is it just <laughs> Tuesday night is not a good night for us, is it? on so All right, I'll, I'll let's do it. what we can go I'll go go it. robbie smith where do you think jackal token price will settle in at once the company gets going and starts doing business just your thoughts not asking for a wild prediction uh where do i actually see it no you'd laugh me out of the park you would absolutely laugh me out of the park if i gave you the number uh but I'll, I'll do it because emery's not on and nobody can stop me and i don't think patrick uh dunlop is watching tonight uh Buck and a half. That's where it's going to be. It will be at a dollar and a half. That's where I have, based on what I am see, based on what I'm going to be doing on this, it's not wild speculation. I'm not telling you to buy it. I don't think you should, as a matter of fact. But the nifty thing about it, that about Jacqueline itself, that plays so well with everything else that I have going on. And just so you know, uh, I, I'm happy to disclose it, guys. I'm six plus figures deep into this all right this is not a hobby for me all right i have a solid idea what they're doing where they're going how they're going to get there i i i'm very very well in tuned with this one i'm not going to arbitrarily throw that much money at, at anything unless i can work out the who what when where why and how i think i have i'm very very comfortable with this one uh, the price action right now is irrelevant to me. It really is. Not because I'm saying, oh, look, it was more day. I don't care about my losses. I absolutely care about my losses. And if you think I wouldn't rather this be at $1.80, you are out of your damn mind. But Jackal is prime, I I exclusively one of those use case tokens that I'm talking about on here. Its value will not be derived from speculation. It will always have some, just like any stock, just like anything else. It will always have a speculative asset to it, uh, aspect to it because this is crypto. And certainly, if more people buy than sell, it's going to go up. If more people sell than buy, it's going to go down. But Jackal has what a great deal of uh, what most of these tokens don't have, and that is an external revenue stream. What is Jackal's revenue stream? What is its main function of the Jackal token? Data storage. That's what they are. That's what they do. That's what they built. That's not all they're doing, but that is the first module that's going to be going live. I just got some information about this tonight. I'm not at liberty to, to share it, but just say that Scott's smiling and happy. So I have a very, very uh, solid idea of where the target price of this thing is going to be. So I have no particular aversion to buying it now. I don't think you should. If you cannot work out the who, what, when, where, why, and how of this token... I would strongly recommend that you don't buy it. I would recommend that for any token. If you can't explain the token, if you can't explain the tokenomics, if you cannot see a path without be going to YouTube videos or listening to other people, if you can't personally work out a path to see this thing get from A to B to C, why the hell would you invest in it? 
If you don't see it, why would you put money in it? I, it it's madness to me. It's absolute madness. I am a very, very, very strong advocate of personal research. Do the research. Look into it for yourself. See if you see what I see. If you do, buy it. If you don't, stay the hell away from it. But you need to do this and apply this to every token, not just Jackal, not just Wawa, not just any any token, anything that you're going to put your money in. Uh, I, I we got a kind of a default position, I say, because I'm a, I'm a, I'm in engineering now, so we always have to we got to change it up a little bit. But uh, I always come back to any of the uh, customers, my legacy job, and I say, how important is your power to you? Is it very, very, very important? that your power keeps flowing uninterrupted, that the blinky lights never stop blinking. Is that very important to you? Yes, good. Then you're gonna have to pay for it. I will say the same thing into crypto, but caveat this just a little bit. How important is your money to you? Because if your money is very, very important to you, it seems to me that you could take some time to do some research. I, it, I promise you, if you research it and become very, very knowledgeable about what anything that you're going to invest in and apply a very, very, uh, not rigid, but your own personal metrics to it to assign an intrinsic valuation to that token, if you can do that, that's all you need to know if I'm going to buy it or sell it. You don't need YouTube. You don't need the podcast. You don't need Bell. You don't need any of us. You already know. You've done the research. You've done the work. You dig deep and you know where this thing should be that's the case, go ahead and invest. If it doesn't work out, you don't see it the way I see it, don't. Just like that. Hope that answered the question. Bell, please carry on. Microman, where is Osmo in this scenario? Valuable now or waiting for value capture? Well, you know, Osmo is kind of an odd duck. Uh, Osmo has value capture already. It, it's called swap fees. Now, we get most of them. We do get most of them. But Osmo is another one of those uh, uh, tokens, which I don't recommend you buy. Honestly, I don't. Stay away. I think you can do better. Uh, I'm in it because I believe in what they're doing. I believe in what they will do. So I'm more than happy to take the stretch, uh, take the risk for anybody else who's not in Osmo. I wouldn't recommend it. I'd recommend that you stay out of it. All right. It has got a very, very, very long road. And a lot of things have to line up for Osmo to work. I am heavily diversified, heavily diversified. So even though Osmosis is probably my single largest investment, Osmo can go to zero tomorrow and I'm not going to jump out a window. I am heavily diversified. This is trading fundamentals, trading 101. This is not even 101. This is zero. Diversify, diversify, diversify. If you do that, if you have the discipline to diversify, if you have the discipline to look at lots of different products, to not fall in love with a single one to the detriment of any other opportunity that's out there, if you have that kind of discipline, then you can do what I do. You can do it at the, you'll get to the scale I'm at. All of that is possible if you have the discipline. So where does Osmo come in? Osmo is the airport. Yeah, well, we call it airport. I'm not even sure what we even call it anymore. Cosmos is a big group of independent kingdoms that don't speak the same language. They don't. It's a whole bunch of little kingdoms all over this great big globe called the Cosmos, and none of them speak the same language. However, Osmosis will translate for you. That's what they do. Osmo will translate. So if you do want to buy some Chihuahua, I don't know why you would, but if you do, you can get it, uh, come to the Osmos, or you can come to the uh, come to Osmosis, find a translator. He'll talk to uh, Chihuahua for you, and you give them a bag of money, and they'll give you a bag of Chihuahua. That's what happens here. Now, all of none of this is free, all right? There's always going to be a cost associated with all of this stuff, whether Osmosis charges the L1s directly, which they do. They get a little bit. Uh, whether it's gas fees that you pay because you got to pay that translator, call it tipping the bellman. That's what you do every time that you hit that button and you give a little bit of gas. You are tipping the uh, tipping the uh, doorman. So they get their value capture by providing this service to the entirety of the cosmos. That's where the value capture comes in. Is this all they're going to be doing? Right now, this is all they are doing, but that's not all they're going to be doing. So I'm invested in this based on right now, plus based on a little bit in the future. 
And inside of six months is going to tell me everything I need to know. If they can't do what they said they were going to do inside of the next six months, I'm out. I'm out just like that. Uh, I see that as the best value uh, proposition for osmosis. And if they are hell bent on not putting that in, I will find a better use for my money. That's it. It's nothing against them. But if I see a better place to earn something that has more potential, a use case token that is actively doing what they uh, intended to do, and they're they're open and honest. They'll talk to their investors. They'll treat my money as if it was just as important to me as it was to them. Uh, that's being the case. I, I I'll move my money over there. It's again nothing against Osmo. It was great. We had fun. But uh, I I'm looking for to maximize my value capture. I want to get the maximum I can out of my money. And with a shifting paradigm that's happening in crypto right now, it's more important than ever. All right, I'm not gonna hold. I'm not gonna do this. I'm not gonna hold and believe. You gave me a timeline, and if you don't hit that timeline, I'm out. All right, because there is always gonna be another uh, something that's available. So I will move my money where my money is treated best. Hope that answered the question, Bell. Please carry on. Microman dropped you a compliment, saying, "By the way, looking smart. Love the shirt." Thank you, thank you. I didn't pick out the shirt. You know, you guys know who picked you. <laughs> You guys know who picked it up. Come on, Bell, give me something. Microman again. Do Akash, Jackal, and Fetch make a promising triad? Computing, yep. storage, and application? How can it not, man? Look, we, we've been trying to be real, real subtle about all this stuff. Now, I didn't hit a ca uh Is it a cash or a kosh? Somebody please spell it out phonetically in chat. If it's a cash or a kosh. If somebody knows, please spell it out phonetically and Bell will correct me. Uh I'm I'm moving heavier and heavier into a kosh. I'm gonna call it a kosh with my little pink. Look about it. I got my little pinky up. I'm gonna call it a kosh. But uh, boy, I see good value there. I absolutely see good value there, man. Not just because it's kind of cool and it's kind of you know shtick and look at this. I can set up my own server. Not just because of all those things, but because of the way that I see the cloud. You guys, you, you got to keep in mind, man. Look, I am in these buildings all day, every day. All right. I know specifically what is going on in these big gray windowless buildings all day, every day, from data storage to server rentals to cloud computing. I know this business. I live in this business. I've spent 30 years in this business. So when I see the opportunity to do what these businesses are, are doing, but to do it at one tenth of the cost, sir, you have my full attention absolutely have my full attention. So I see a tremendous amount of value there. Now, what we're trying to do here on the podcast is because we own these tokens and we preach these products, we want to utilize these products, uh, projects. So I'm doing what I can to effectively build a uh, very low rent kind of one person YouTube, meaning I want to set up in a cash, a cash server that will allow me to host video uh, live streams. And we think we got it. Leanson's working on this on our end. We need a chat program. We need a chat to overlay on it so that anybody who's watching the live stream can still chat along with us. Uh, that's the next thing that we're looking up, and we're going to set that up on another a cache server so that we can combine these. And then we can say, look, you got video, you got chat. We just built this, and we're hosting all of this for six damn dollars a month. That's what we want to do is show that this is what Web3 is. This is what these products do. This is what we are striving for. So we're doing what we can, but uh, un unfortunately, I'm technically illiterate. I'm just, it's not my thing. This is my thing. I talk into microphones and uh, I, I can carry a tune. But aside from that, I don't set up servers. However, I do have the money to pay people to do it on my behalf. So uh, that that's what we're trying to do. But yes, that is a an absolute powerhouse. Uh, honestly, man, I think that uh, a saving grace right now, something that would be huge. And if any of the altar folks are watching right now, you guys would do better moving from secret over to Jackal. You would absolutely do better moving your entire platform from secret over to Jackal. Everything that you guys have, everything that you're building, everything that you're doing requires data storage. You're going to do better building it on a data storage platform than you are over on secret. No knock against secret. Secret's a good product. I do like secret. Price action is a little mixed. <laughs> well, I, I'm trying to be subtle about that, Bell. It's a little mixed. Uh, it, it's not exactly enthralling, but... 
I see a uh, a tremendous amount of value in what Secret does, and that is privacy. I'm a big fan of privacy. So I see a lot of value there, but I don't see a lot of value capture. So again, I want to do what's best for my money. That's all it is. I'm not knocking them. I'm just saying my money can be better spent somewhere else right now if they get it together if they can uh, ease this up, if they can get some nifty, you know, new programs up there building on secret, babe, I'm back. All right, I'm back. I want to do what's best for my money. But right now there's just too many, uh, there's a lot of struggles in that community. There are an awful lot of struggles in that community. So I just, again, guys, look, I'm pinging on products and alter, love it or hate it, whether I do or I don't, it doesn't matter. The fact is, is that it is a product and I want to shift my money that direction. So the only thing I think holding me back from actually using Alter, aside from a real bad taste in my mouth, uh, is the fact that it's it's not where I would like it to be. Obviously, Scott, you can buy it. I could just buy Alter and move it over there. I'm not going to do that. I, I, but I, I would love to see them set up over there so that I could use the Alter chat and put that up on the uh, decentralized YouTube that we're <laughs> A single man YouTube we're starting to put together. Hope that answered the question. I know I went off the rail, guys. Rails guy. I'm having a ball. I'm having a ball tonight. Hope you hope it's entertaining. Bell, oh, please carry on. All right. Robbie Smith hit us with a four dollar and ninety nine cent super chat. Thank you, Robbie. That was awesome. I, I do I know I say it all the time. I'm gonna say it again. Uh our goal on this thing is to get Bell to twenty dollars an hour. So that she is at least incentivized to continue producing. Uh, when we're not live, it's because Bell is not going to go live. That's basically what it is. And I'm not going to make her because I'm not paying her. You guys pay her. So if I keep coming back, you like live streams, hook up the bell. Carry on, please, ma'am. Joshua Knight, what are some good sources for, do for doing your own research? Uh, trying to think about how to answer this somebody pinged me up in uh for some subjects from members videos so i'll tell you what man i'm going to put out a series of members videos members only because i i don't want to fight with uh people and i get so many jag off comments i just don't want to bother with it so i i'm literally going to give you a day in the life that's what we're going to do and we're going to do it as a series a day in the life of scott the crypto guy and we're going to start it from the 4 a.m. What do I do when I get up? What's the first thing I do when I walk through? And I'm going to introduce you to the research that I do day to day to day. I think that that will, uh, it'll be, it'll answer the question better than any other way I could sit here and babble through it. So instead of telling you about it, how about I just show you? Now, you have to catch, uh, keep in mind, if I want to do it, I want to do it right. So you're going to get 4 a.m. Scott. That's the beard is all <laughs> It's all over the place. And I'm probably wearing a wife beater t-shirt or something like that. So you're going gonna to have to deal with that and uh, me whispering and stuff. But other than that, I think it'll be very, very informative. So I will bring that to you. You asked, and we haven't put out members videos in a while. I think it'd be a nice series. Uh, you're not the first person to ask. So if you guys hit it up, you want to see specifically what I do and how I arrive at a valuation for a token, I'm happy to show you. I'm not saying it's right or the way it's only my way hope that answered the question bell please carry on microman a cash for me i'm still using the vpn working well i'm telling you man this thing is a hidden damn gem uh like most use case products it takes a while to develop it takes a while to get out there it really really does uh a cash a cat did somebody phonetically spell it out <laughs> microman phonetically spelled it out a cash a cash all right so if i'm wrong and i get called out in a comment dude i'm sending them your way microman uh neil lawrence and i will put in your email here this is microman's email I'll explain it to him so uh yeah dude i i think a cash is doing absolutely wonderful things cloud computing man decentralized cloud computing i i don't think i i i didn't want to undersell it but uh, just that that silly little VPN that we set up, I didn't want to undersell it. But you do understand what that is, right? I mean, I want to make sure I hit everything on this thing. And I'm going big screen for it because I want to make sure I make the point. Uh, any VPN you're going to use, with the exception of Orchid or uh, uh, Sentinel, uh, aside from those two things, any other VPN that you're going to sign up, 
the first thing that they're going to ask you for is an email address. They're going to ask you for personal information every time. doesn't matter who it is. It could be Nord. could be uh, just tons, whatever VPN is on your phone. The first thing they're going to do is ask you for personal information. They absolutely will. Now, you're using them. Why? Because you want to keep what you're doing to yourself? Great. I think that's wonderful. But as soon as you send them your personal information, that's out the window. You have the illusion of privacy because it's not only you who knows what you're looking for. It's your VPN company that is also knowing what you're looking for, knowing what your searches are, knowing what data is coming in or out between them and your phone. That's a VPN and that's how it works. It is the absolute illusion of privacy. What we did with Acash, it better be Acash, dude. I'm going to feel like such an asshole if it's not. He just messing with me. Uh, what we did with Acash that cost us $2 a month. When we got to Acash, they didn't give a shit who we were. They didn't ask. They didn't care. They said, do you got some Acash? I said, yes, I do. They said, good. Welcome aboard. Uh, I bid out. I said, I want to set up a VPN server. How much will you charge? And I got bids, bids from multiple providers saying, we'll charge you this much. I just wanted to set it up as kind of a hobby thing. I just want to see if it could be done. Sure enough. So I picked one that's about $2 a month. They didn't ask who I was. They didn't ask what I was doing. They didn't care what I was doing. They said, where do you want this server to be located? I said, somewhere in the Netherlands. And, oh, look, there's one right there in the Netherlands. I reached out to a friend, a uh, couple friends. We got a lot of Netherlands folks, by the way, uh, Bell. That's both TJ and uh, uh, Orban Wars folks. They're all from the Netherlands, man. This is the uh, uh, incubus of the new modern Web 3. Apparently, it's coming out of the Netherlands. But... I reached out to them and I asked them about a specific data center that was mentioned on there. And they both said, oh, yeah, we know it's right over there. It's a big ass building. I said, great. This is something that has service level agreements. If you don't know what an SLA is, Scott at the podcast dot com, I'll explain. I'll will explain all that to you. That means that this is least space in a professionally upkept data center. Two dollars a month. That's what it costs. They didn't ask me who I was. They didn't care who I was. They said, do you have a cash? I said, yes, I do. They said, knock yourself out. And we did. Anybody who's connected to that VPN and all the instructions, it's free. It's my dime, guys. Knock yourself out. But everybody who's connecting to that VPN using the instructions that we provided, they don't know who the hell you are. I don't know who you are. Nobody knows who you are. This is actually a VPN the way a VPN was designed to be. Privacy, pure privacy. They don't know who you are. There is no personally identifiable information with that. And we said set it up for $2 a month. It is not going to happen overnight, but it is going to happen. Big fan. Going to stick around. Loving the prices. Loving what I can earn with it. And the fact that I have enough stake right now to pay for all of the hosting services for every server that I have stood up. It doesn't cost me shit. Loving it. Hope that answered the question bell please carry on leanton name for the single man youtube will be scott tube scott tube oh dear god no leanton's working it up you know and he's kind of uh he's playing around with graphics too so if anybody can make the scott tube logo that'll be that <laughs> oh and you know what you can use the tip on scott tube power bottom if we can ever <laughs> get it stood up i'm sorry man but juno swap <laughs> is uh just a fucking travesty. We're trying to be, I'm trying to be so political uh, and uh, politically correct on this, but that is a shit show. And unfortunately, it's the big dog on Juno Swap. Most people associate Juno with the apps that are built on Juno. Juno Swap is built on Juno, and it is a shit show. It's bad optics. Guys, I, you, do you, are you governance? Do you have some? Are you guys cool with it? Because what you're doing is uh, uh, just, it is ridiculously bad optics. If they are not going to build it, get them the fuck out of there and stand up something that is appealing. How about this? Something that will actually be developed because it is clear that this thing was stood up on a shoestring budget and walked away from, but it is the decks of Juno. If you want this to your chain to be taken seriously, get them the hell off from there. We've been trying so hard. This is the slow, slow, just Chinese water torture death of, of a token. And that's one of the things that's leading the charge. You don't believe me or agree with me. I don't care. I'm absolutely right on this. Hope that answered the question. Bell, please carry on. You I am having it, fun tonight. <laughs> I am having fun tonight, kitten. 
It, it sounds to me like uh, Linson and Logan need to join forces because, you know, Logan's already designed the Power Bottom logo. He, he's definitely, he's the graphics master. I mean, those two, their powers combined, it, it could potentially be wonderfully scary. You know what? If you go back looking at this show, the podcast, where we started and where we are, when we started, we sucked. Our production value was dick and I, it, it was fun because it was almost to the point where i was like oh, come no one will watch us it's like because your show looks like ass that's why no one will watch it your show looks like ass there's no real big you know magic formula here if you put up and provide good production value and you you know at least somewhat entertaining content you're gonna get some views it's not that hard uh so, but in this case, I want it stood up and I don't give a shit what it looks like. I don't care about logos. I don't care about graphics. I don't care about any of that. What I care about is functionality. Let's make it work and then we'll make it pretty. Uh, anybody that's ever been in the military, raise your hands. Bell, I'll give you a shout out. Uh, anybody who's been in the military in an enlisted status, this matters too, in enlisted, will know this term. Work it may, shine it must. And if you were ever in the military, you know what I'm talking about. The three-star general is coming to visit, so we better make everything polished. Should we fix the artillery, even the broken shit? Should we make it pretty? Yeah, yeah, make it pretty. Doesn't matter if it works, only matters that it shines. I kind of go the other way. I would rather it work and look like ass because I can always make it better. But if it doesn't work at all, what the hell am I shining? I could have the greatest graphics on the most non-functional product ever invented. I just kind of go the other way. But yeah, if you want to put those two in a room together and 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 let them bang it out, that's fine. All I care about is that the damn thing works. So let's get to go there first. And again, military guys, you you know what I'm talking about. Carry on, Bill. And Patrick Burbank actually gave the uh, hands up motion. So yeah, thank you, Patrick. Patrick Burbank. Thank you for your service, sir. Wonderful, wonderful. I did 26 years. This is what 26 years of uh, Navy will do to you. That that's it, man. So if you didn't like the time, this is what your 50s looks like, babe. Welcome to it. Bell, carry on. All right, Patrick Burbank actually dropped a comment, and I think this one was a little bit tongue in cheek. I know you love AMP. They're doing another 12 days of Flexa this year, but still no SDK. I'm going to make you laugh with this. AMP to the moon. <laughs> you know, AMP is its tough for me, man. It really is. Look, guys, we uh, broke out in the crypto chat. I'm saying broke out like we're such a big fucking channel. Uh, but we kind of broke out in crypto because of AMP. So I will never, ever forget where I came from. And as far as that, I'll continue to do AMP videos. And if I'm the last person doing AMP videos, even if they're critical. And most of my AMP videos are critical because I think that it needs to be called out. But I will always have a soft spot in my heart for AMP. I absolutely will. And it fits with the direction that we are going as uh, as a channel and as investments, meaning that we're pushing into products. AMP is, in fact, a product. It's just either very early, very bad, or very mismanaged. It's one of those three things, and I can't uh, really put my finger on it. The thing that pisses me off more about AMP than anything else they do, anything else, aside from the fact that they are... If you were going to make a flag for AMP, it should just say coming soon and fly it at the top of every building so everybody knows it's coming soon because that's all you ever get out of them. Uh, we're coming to the end of 2022. The SDK, which is ready right now, just ready to be released, was announced in 2021. Well, guys, it's been a whole fucking year and a half. Where the hell is it? I understand you want to dot the I's and cross the T's. I think you've had time. I think you've had plenty of time to dot the I's and cross the T's, fucking release it. Uh, but the, the thing that really keeps me back about that is that I don't believe, this is my personal opinion, they don't respect their investors. They absolutely do not respect their investors. I mean, not even a little bit. They don't even pretend to pay lip service to their investors. These are the people who have been carrying your water for two years. These are the guys who will say something when you won't say shit. How much contempt do you have for your damn investors that you would treat them this way? I, I think it's a fair question. And I understand if I go to the Reddit, well, you got no goddamn right. They don't, you know what? Fuck you. I do have a right. You have my money. You buried my money. You put it to sleep. 
through your ineptness, your mismanagement, and the fact that you won't say shit if you had a mouthful. You put my money to sleep, and God damn it, I want an answer. You told me repeatedly, vote with your pocketbook. I did. I did. All right? I sold all of this shit when it was still well above six cents. So as much as I want this thing to make a recovery, there is something that's going to have to happen. And it's not 12 days of Flexa. It's not any of this other shit. It's do what you said you did. Provide what you said you did. You have spent two years talking about building bridges and you haven't delivered shit. At what point do your investors who you clearly hold in contempt say enough's enough? At what point do they do this? And then you walk away from it and say, well, shucks, we tried. You buried $500 million. <laughs> Just gone. Just gone. I think it's okay to ask for an accounting on this. I'm I'm just saying. Aside from that, I would love to get behind this project if they would seem to support it because I don't see that. I just don't see it. You shouldn't have brought up AMP tonight. I didn't bring it up. You brought it up. I, I, I'm indifferent. I'm right about everything I said. Bell, please carry on. G Torres 1719. I have Nord VPN, but I'm curious to how well Akash works as a VPN. So going to attempt to set it up now. Never thought about the anonymity factor of not having to use email, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. G Taurus, look, go to the podcast Discord. Bell, please link it. Uh, there's a, a part a, a thing on the podcast Discord called the podcast VPN. Just follow the instructions, babe. All right. Don't set it. Don't worry about setting it up yourself. You're more, or please do knock yourself out if you have a good experience. Email me. But if you just want to see if it works, uh, use mine. All right, we don't ask your name, number, we don't give a shit. I have I don't care. But if you want to see if it's functional, go to the Discord, pop it on there, use ours. Uh, it's OpenVPN. It's a free software program. Just use, do, follow the instructions. Emery laid them out and see if you like it. If it likes it, great. And if you want even more security, set up your own. If you want to set up your own, man, it ain't hard. That's what I'm saying. And we, I guarantee you that the one you set up is going to be cheaper than anything you pay for. I pay $2 a month, and I it's on my phone, and it's never turned off. There's no point in me turning it off. It works fine, does everything I needed to do, and they don't know who the hell I am. I think it's a wonderful thing. G. Taurus, great question. Uh, Bell, please carry on. Zaya, Evmos Dev really sell? Evmos Dev really sell? Oh, I know where he's going. Uh, probably. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Look, uh, there's been a very, very big vaporous product that's uh, been milling about the cosmos for a really, really long time called Evmos. And eventually, there comes a time when uh, hyperinflation is not going to keep people incentivized. Eventually, you come to a time you say, okay, that's great. It's easy to get... Evmos, what the hell am I going to do with it? And then you're going to hit that point where I hit a few months ago where the best thing that I can do with Evmos is turn it into cash, is to harvest the hell out of these diffusion, the stakes, all that other stuff, harvest the hell out of them, take that money and turn it into cash. I'm not the only one who did it. So did the devs sell? Uh, I'd have to counter that and say, what have they built? What is the big Evmos uh, DAP that exists that's just taken web three by storm that you have on your phone or on your computer that you just can't live without this is part of the what who what when where why and how that's a what question what have you actually built what is actually up there not coming soon not any of these things what actually exists because you don't need a team of 30 to build a dap oracle was built with two people have you heard of them two guys built it just saying uh, did they sell? Probably. Uh, did they rug everybody underneath them? Probably. Man, this is crypto, babe. This is what uh, we talked about this one. We said you don't want to be the last person holding that flag. You just don't. If you're the last guy holding the flag, uh, you're also holding a big ass empty bag and you're expected to turn off the lights as you leave the room. Uh, you know what? We, we talked about this one. So did they? Probably. Uh, yeah. Hope that answered the question. <laughs> I got nothing else on that, Bob. Carry on. Microman. Oh, hey, in our warehouse, shit gets painted when the top managers come around. Doesn't matter if it does anything. Nope. Doesn't matter. Work it may, shine it must. Uh, 
God, that almost summarizes crypto pretty well, doesn't it? It encapsulates crypto. Doesn't matter if FMOS, all right? Doesn't look at this damn thing. Everybody loves it. Look at the press. Look at the Twitter. Look at all this building coming soon. Look at all this shit. Look at the shine that's on this. And then you go looking down and you're like, wow, it does shit. Doesn't do a thing. And eventually, uh, people are going to wise up. And when they wise up, it goes from $2 to 50 cents and a very, very short amount of time. And then people seem surprised. They seem very, very surprised. Uh, we'll get back to questions if we got any left, Bell, and I'm happy to run long tonight. Uh, I did want to talk about uh, this tonight. We've been, Emery and I have been having some really, really good discussions about this one. So, guys, this is Bo, Bo Kajira. Now, there are a lot of different opinions on Kajira. But I, I've kind of stayed out of the discussion. But you know what? I have a channel. I have a YouTube channel. People, you guys tune in. Obviously, you're curious about my thoughts. So I thought it'd be fun to give them to you. Uh, big problem with Kajira, closed source. Don't like it. Don't care for closed source. However, I'm going to caveat this one. Uh, if you're doing something that is beautiful and unique and you don't want to get scooped before you have a time to really get your, you know, get your foundation set, I understand that. I think it is uh, wrong from a crypto standpoint to be coming back and saying, well, we're purely closed source. There's nothing you can do about it. We're not going to show our code. And in this case, we'll vote for our what with our wallet. And a lot of people did. Kajira is not in a very, very, very happy place over the last uh, little bit. Let's just take a look. Uh, it's easier to show you than to talk about it. Uh, that's currently the price of Kajira. All right, 66 cents. Let's look at it over the last 100 days or 180 days. Uh, that's not a tremendously good investment. I mean, that's not something you want to look at and go, oh, yippee, I'm sure I'm glad that I'm in this. Nobody's really going to pile on that one. But what Kajira has done is very systematically built the features for what they have going on over here. And these features are sitting right here. Orca, Finn, Bo, Pod, Finder, Blue. We can keep going on and on. These guys have built an ecosystem. They have built their very own ecosystem. And they are building the community that belongs on their ecosystem. That's kind of the kicker with this one is that they've been hitting each and every one of these things, and I think it's been fabulous. Now, the big problem I have with Kajira, I do want to put it out, not just the closed source, even though I'm willing to overlook it. I don't think, and I'm not doing this, going big screen here, Bill. I'm not doing this to say you should invest in Kajira. I don't care if you invest in Kajira. Kajira is another use case. I don't care. Its value is not derived from you investing. Its value is derived from people using it. So whether or not you invest in it is irrelevant to me. I don't care. But the big problem that I have with this, believe it or not, aside from everything else, not the closed source, I'm indifferent. But the big problem that I have with this one is that token right there. You guys see that one that says USK? I have a problem with that little bit of a problem with that. Now, if you come over here to bo.kajira.app and you take a look at their pools, what do you see on all of their pools here? What is paired against all of their pools? USK, 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 up and down here. They got an Axlar USDC, two USDCs, but aside from that, it's all USK. The problem I have with this is their stable token, which I have to put up in quotation marks because I haven't nutted this one out yet. I haven't gotten to the bottom of it. Uh, I like stable tokens, guys. I'm a big fan of stable tokens. But here's the problem I have with this one is, uh, oh, shit, I forgot the name of it. <laughs> Sorry, Bell, I've been drinking today. USK. Uh, the problem that I have with this one is that if you look at their stable-ish token, which in this case is called USK, here's where the problem do you guys see what USK is worth right this minute? Dollar seven. Dollar seven. Do you guys see the low point on this token? We can take a look right here. Uh, all time high of Kajira, of USK. All right, guys, look, this is a staple token. All time high was $1.94. The all time low was 93 cents. If you look at this over a, uh, you know, I'm going to give good on that because it's, it, it's look, I, it's worth a dollar seven, Bell. I'm up 7% on a stable token. Uh, if you look at this thing over the 90 days, man, you don't want to be invested in that. You don't want to call that a stable token. That's not stable. It's not even close. And it just seems like you guys are building an awful lot of trust into a stable token paired on the other side of all these pools. 
You guys are putting a lot of trust into a stable token that's not stable. And I haven't seen the math for this one because you're closed source. So I can't look at it and take it apart. Now, between me, you, and the tree, big fan. Big fan of Kajira. I love what they're doing. I love their dedication. I love that they have a vision and that they're, that they're pushing through with it. I love all these things. How could I not be a fan of people that are delivering products that they said they were going to deliver and delivering them on time, respecting their investors? How can I not be a fan of all that stuff? But there's a couple of little things in there that I just, it keeps me from pushing in big, big money, Bell. That, that's what it comes down to. I'm not talking to anybody who might be on the stream. I'm just talking to Bell. Bell, that's the problem I have with this one is that I'm just, there's a couple of little things in here that I have issues with. One being the USK, two being the closed source. But aside from that, these guys are operating like a business that I want to be involved in. They are absolutely doing exactly that. Now, I'm not even talking about APRs because these things are clearly illustrated. They tell you on here, this is not a pure APR. This is an incentivized APR. We're paying you because we need you to provide liquidity for our decks. They disclose it. These things are incentivized, and this is why. So when I look at this one, little Adam USK at 106%, my goodness, how does that not incentivize me to push money in there? I love pairing Adam with anything, anything. But the only <laughs> part of the trigger that I've been able to pull on this, Bell, is to stick 120 bucks of loose Adam that I had sitting over there on USK. That's the only thing that I've managed to pull the trigger on because uh, it's USK, Bell. That's a tough, tough sell for me. But the breakout of this is really, really nice. You see your APR. They explain why, and they explain what they're paying you out in. You can see it right here, up and down. If they were open source, if they were open source and I could actually look through all of this so that I could answer the why and I could answer the how. If I they went open source and I could do this, man, I'll tell you flat out, any money that I had on Osmo would be sitting over there right now. Absolutely. I see what they're doing. I understand why they're doing it. And I just can't explain how they're doing it because they're because their code is uh, closed. That's the only bummer I have on that one, Bell. Uh, I know nobody asked that asked that question, but I did want to get that out there. So for anybody who's considering uh, Kajira, Bo, I want to give you my thoughts on it. That's all it is. We haven't done any videos on that. I'm not going to pump this one up. Again, it's closed source in USK. I don't want to... I don't want to get people, somebody looking that direction who might not have if this one shits the bed. But if they could answer those two things, why don't you reach out to them, Bell? Nobody's doing Kajira videos. We could talk about them. Why don't you re take a note? I'm waiting. To, I'm looking mm -hmm. at you right now, and you're not writing anything down. Why don't you take a note and see if you can get a dev on? Because I'm sure our people would love to ask them questions. This thing hits every damn wicket that I'm looking for in a crypto. All of them. But I gotta know the I gotta know the how and I gotta know the why. That's the two things that I need to know. If they can answer those, I got a hundred grand. I'm ready to push in right this second. Happy to do it. All right, let's get back to questions, Bell. If we have any, please take it away and somebody drink all my bourbon. Uh, you know, it's been one of those nights, Scott. I mean, somebody <laughs> definitely went through all your bourbon. Yes, all they right. did. Monero De Niro, Chainlink staking went live today. What is the main oracle of the cosmos? Uh, I don't know. I don't know who our central oracle is. Uh, it's not Chainlink, I don't believe. There, there's more than one. Uh, let me research it, man. I'll get you the answer on that one. Carry on, Bill. Makokata Streamwalker, shine up the show with a Santa suit. With the Santa suit, you really want is is that it? Or it? Does the bald head really bother you guys? It's not bald, by the way. I shave my head. I, it's just, uh, I do live armored fighting and I wear helmets. And if you've ever gotten hair in your eyes when you have a close helm that's wrapped around your face, it's murder. That's it. You lost. All right. You can't see, and you're not going to get the hair out of your eyes. So I shave my head because of that. But that that's it. You guys want me in a Santa suit? I'll do a Santa suit. Hell, we'll do giveaways, Bell. Oh, but we're not. Uh, we're going to stick to uh, giving away Bicana because Bicana pay rail. Bicana goes live tomorrow. The the pay rail. The big. 
Look it up for yourself. I didn't do a video, but I will tomorrow once it goes live, and I'll show you guys me buying and selling things with, with Bitcana. So that goes live tomorrow. So we're not going to do that, but we will give away Bitcana. Bell, please carry on. All right. And I, I, I'm giggling like crazy over this one. Logan <laughs> was actually listening and chimed in with, with the P.S., Wicked Luster is from New York City and was originally two of the biggest members of a band called Kiss. Kiss, and I'm that's and right. I'm 37, not 40. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so for anybody who didn't hear the entry song, which I have to scrub out of the video so you'll never hear it again, uh, the answer to that was the answer to the band is Wicked Lester, and it was uh, uh, founded by a guy named Paul Stanley and uh, Gene Simmons. So if you if it if you were listening to that song and he said, "Boy, that sounds like Paul Stanley," it's because it was it was Paul Stanley. That they, they were Wicked Lester before they were Kiss. I'm a huge Kiss fan, love Kiss, and uh, so yeah, I've I've uh, dug down their origin stories. <laughs> Hope that answered it, Bell. Please carry on. <laughs> To give Logan credit, yeah, about about nine months or so ago, yeah, he won lunch off of me because I asked that question in our in our team's chat at work, and he, <laughs> so he right knew it before he, you knew it. Yeah, he did. He oh, that's awesome! <laughs> <laughs> I see uh, another one. Twelve days of the podcast. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, BCNA payment plug it plug in is going live tomorrow. And Microman is great. Microman is my mule. He's uh, he's my Brit. <laughs> and uh, I, I buy most of my stuff through uh, Royal Queen Seeds. And that right there, you guys see over in uh, the lower right hand corner of your screen, you see the Royal Queen Seeds. Uh, they're uh, big. They're head shops right over there in the UK, but they won't ship to the states. So I have to mule everything through Microman. And uh, I just make my purchases and I use his address and they send him everything. And then we work out a little deal and he sends it to me. It's not seeds, guys. It's not cannabis. It's nothing illegal. I buy T-shirts and stickers and stuff like that. We got a bunch we got to give away on the show. We just never have yet. Uh, but I mule them through Microman. So, uh, yeah, that's great. I get to keep my anonymity. Bell, carry on, please. All right. And John S., I hate to ask this, but I hold some lunacy and was looking at this being enabled on IBC, lost money aside, is it going to be a good investment, especially from a mining operation? Luna? Oh, man, I don't know. Uh, you know, that that's kind of getting into the far reaches of crypto right now. <laughs> it's like, you know, and the funny thing is that we go looking back and uh, it's just this uh, little vague memory that we used to have about a, some, a token called UST that was backed by something called Luna. So we, it's like it happened so long ago. Wasn't that long ago. That's a funny thing. Uh, is it going to, you know... The ledger is immutable. That's the funny thing. And I think we forget about that in crypto is the fact that the decentralized ledger is, in fact, immutable. And if it exists, it will always exist. As long as there is a single validator up that is still producing blocks, then it will always exist. So I'm not going to come back here and say that Luna will never, ever make a comeback. I'm, I will say that it's not something that I'm investing in, uh, even though, you know what, for what it's worth, Bell, I know the use case of Luna. The use case of Luna is to secure the dollar peg of UST. That's it. That's what it's for. Uh, big fan of stable. <laughs> big fan of stable tokens. Uh, I don't know how to answer this, man, dude. That's that's like that's like really digging back. That's like asking me about coin. Do you think it's going to make a comeback? Well, no, but you know, I I don't know. I <laughs> there's no good way to answer this one. Uh, hold on to it, man. That that's it. I still have. I don't know, half million or a half a million UST I still have. That's worth about six or seven grand. I'm just not going to dump it because it's nostalgia for me now. So I don't know, man. I can't predict the future. That's a great question, though. Nobody ever asks us about Luna. That's the first time. Round of applause for the Luna question. Bell, carry on. All right. Patrick Burbank hit us with the $5 super chat saying nothing but love and respect for you guys. The amp blast was amazing. Did you like Dude, I'm not trying to get fired. I, I mean, I'm really not trying to, to go out of my way to blast amp or anything like that, man. But they did it to themselves. Here, here, here you go, guys. I, I'll turn on B2 so Bell can hear it. So whenever I think about amp and the potential that they had and what they actually did, here's, here's usually my answer. I will find you, and 
I will kill you. That that's that's kind of how I feel about it because you guys had the uh, you guys had the crypto world by the shorties and you did nothing with it. You decided, you know what? We're gonna just step back. We're worried about the SEC. We're worried about all this shit instead of actually building your goddamn product. Uh, everybody else did. I'm, I'm just saying, man, you're not the only pay rail. You're not the, in fact, Jesus, Big Canna's going live tomorrow. Big Canna released before you guys released. So I'm just saying, stop bringing up Amp, Bell. I'm going to be here all night. Carry on, please. Robbie Smith, can you store Big Canna in a Kepler wallet? Uh, why, yes, you can. Let's take a look. Uh, I'll tell you what, man, I'll walk it through you. Uh, I'll walk through it with you right now so you guys can all see. So if you come over here to uh, uh, we're on Frontier, even though they're on Osmosis proper. And let's say you want to take USDC and you want to buy some Bicana with it. Uh, you're going to go right to here. You're going to say you're going to buy 10 bucks worth uh, because right now it's a I'm sorry, I like the price. Uh, and we're just going to go ahead and swap the USDC for Bitcana. Doing this for Robbie Smith. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. I hate waiting. And every time we do this live, it breaks my heart a little bit. And it kills Belle. She always sends me emails afterwards. Stop doing that shit live because it breaks the rhythm of the show. Belle, you know what? I, 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 I. That's all I got to say on that. So we're going to go ahead and withdraw it directly to our Kepler wallet, which is going to say right there, we will pull off 600. And as a matter of fact, we're going to go even further with this one because I do like to talk to Big Hannah. So right now we are exporting it from Osmosis Frontier over to our BCNA wallet. So after we do that, if we come right over to here, add a tab, kick the Big Hannah wallet. So we go to wallet.bitcana.io. These are all my bud heads, by the way. Aren't these cool little NFTs? One of these is a rarity of 12 out of, I don't know, 8,000. So I guess that's good, but I'm not much of a, uh, I, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not a real big, big canna, not big canna. I'm not a huge, uh, monster, uh, NFT guy. Hang on. I got to change wallets guys. Uh, we'll go with this one. There we go. So, uh, if you come over and you see that we pulled our big canna and you see that the big canna that I just bought is sitting right there. So if we decided that we wanted to stake it, uh, that's funny. I'm staked, but I'm not on my own validator here, Bell. Different wallets, guys. So uh, if you decide, <laughs> stop it, leave me alone. Uh, if you decided you wanted to stake, I think the best validator on this whole damn network is the one called the Podcast. And you come over here and you hit the delegate button and you take that 600 Bitcana that we just purchased from Frontier, moved to our Kepler wallet, and are sending to staking. Then, uh, again, we're walking through step-by-step step precisely how to do that. And you're going to take it away and you're going to dump this thing over here on the podcast validator. Now, the fun thing about the podcast validator is the person that I'm pointing at right now on the screen is the person who runs the podcast validator. So if you have any issues with the podcast validator going offline, not tracking your money, not paying you, Bella at the podcast.com, just saying. So that was a purchase from here all the way over here to the Kepler wallet and then coming out right over here at the Bicana wallet. It's not that hard. Nice, easy, simple steps. And uh, yeah, man, the uh, the rail's coming out tomorrow. I'm very excited, but I'm waiting to see what... But please keep in mind, guys, this is a product. Products don't move fast. They move uh, over time. They move as people uh, use them, period. So it's going to take a while to get this one out. Don't rush. Don't buy it saying, oh, my God, it's going to moon tomorrow. It's not. But it's doing what it was designed to do. I just love that stuff. Bell, carry on, please. All right. G is 1719. Whoa, a cash VPN you set up works great on Mac M1. Even watching 1080p live video is perfect. Just you had to disable auto connect and kill switch on the other VPN. Then I rebooted. Not that hard, man. I'm just saying. And uh, if you guys want to see how hard that is, uh, I don't think I can I can fire it up right now. But let me show you guys the other screen. So, oh, I can't do it right now. I got too many other screens open. I was going to show you step-by-step uh, step how to do it. But uh, that's a little bit further. I'll, I'll make a video. So, yeah, babe, look, that's all it takes. That's a cash. And I'm paying 2 bucks a month for that uh, server. And now there are at least a dozen people that are using this that are hooked up to it full time. And we're doing it at uh, we're doing it again at two bucks a month. The legacy world has problems. They don't know it yet, but it's coming. 
it's coming very piece by piece by piece. It's not even a monetary thing right now. It's an educational thing. We set that up in 10 damn minutes. 10 minutes, and we have at least a dozen people using it. Doesn't cost you shit. Go, go, crypto. Go, go, Web3. Bell, please carry on. That was actually the last the last uh, really good comment from the... Oh, wait a minute. Moby Sage, anything special on your channel happening for the December 7th launch tomorrow of Bitcana? Nope. It speaks for itself. It really does, man. Look, uh, yeah, we're not going to... I'm not going to fire anything up, but once it goes live, if, if I find a way to make some really, really nifty purchases at some really, really interesting places, I will certainly cover it, man. Uh, I don't know if we're going live tomorrow night. We may or may not. It's going to depend on Bell. But uh, yeah, we uh, we might. Because if we do, I, I, I want to do launch parties for it, just like everybody else, man. I think uh, I think Bitcana is just a really, really cool product. I like that they support the uh, cannabis industry. I'm, I don't partake because I still have a job that I have to uh go tinkle in the little plastic cup but as soon as that stops if you're wondering if scott's high the answer is yes scott is high i cannot wait to do a live stream just absolutely stone i chase the lights sober imagine how bad I chase the lights when I'm I. I am so looking forward to that. All right. I'm taking the big screen bell here so we can talk our way out. Guys, I appreciate you enduring me tonight. Uh we uh we hadn't gone live for a little bit. Uh, again, you gotta tip the bell, man. If you want to keep us coming back, you gotta pay the bell. Uh we we had a wonderful time and I, I certainly appreciate it. I feel more comfortable tonight than I did last night. Uh I hope that reflected in the quality of the content. But we're gonna keep bringing it. That, that's it, man. Uh, we are going to keep bringing it. I'm not pivoting anymore. We're going to stick with what we're doing. We're going to stick with uh, projects. We're going to stick with products. We're going to stick with the good stuff. And I'm going to stick with the places that I am putting my money because uh, I think I nailed this one. I really do. I think I got it, man. And I'm, I'm excited to uh, – Daddy wants to get paid. And uh, it, it's time. We've endured enough heartache. We've uh, endured enough shocks. And it's time to get our money in smart. And I believe I'm getting my money in smart. I'm not telling you to buy, just showing you showing you that I am. So appreciate you guys joining us tonight. Uh, we'll keep bringing it. If you want us to go live tomorrow, ask the bell. Uh, that's all I got, Bell. Please talk us up. Take us out of here. All right. Again, ladies and gentlemen, those of you who joined us tonight, it was a sincere pleasure and we appreciate each and every one of you guys. Congrats to Logan who actually put the smack down and won 10 Jackal. He's so that full of shit. He didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> All of you guys, you guys are playing me for $3. <laughs> uh, no, I, I wish I could say that he didn't know that because then, uh, yeah, he would not have won wings from me at work. So, yeah. Anyway, now with that being said, in the meantime, if you guys have any comments, questions or concerns, definitely don't hesitate to send Scott and I an email, scott at thepodcast.com and bella at thepodcast.com and we'll get those answered for you. We will actually, we'll talk about it and we will uh, determine if we're going to go live tomorrow night. With that being said, we again can't thank you guys enough and we will see you next time. Thank you, thank you, thank you.